Long-term plans are changing for many companies uh, in light of the pandemic and digital transformation efforts have been put on fast forward for many companies. Colson Hillier is the CMO at Elorca uh, here with me today to talk about this and uh, some digital transformation projects that you guys have been talking about areas that companies need to be focused on right now, Colson. Uh, let's start with omnichannel orchestration and expand a little bit on where, where do our heads need to be in terms of you know, moving into the future uh, when it comes to this. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the, you know, the idea of omnichannel is really about customer empowerment. So uh, today you think about the way that we interact with the brands that we love and um, almost all of it involves multiple channels. So, uh, you know, I don't sit and watch TV any longer just by itself. I've got my iPad up and I'm emailing or texting or using social networks. And all of those channels have a, a different sort of role to play in the overall customer experience. Um, and it's really important to get it right in terms of how you manage all of those channels in a way that's consistent and delivers a um, an outcome for a customer that doesn't feel like it's coming from six different places. And so, you know, our approach is really to look at that, that sort of opportunity in three different levels. The first is the application layer and making sure that you're relevant and available at all of the different apps that are used by customers to understand your products or get information or make purchases. The second is an intelligence layer where you've got to apply a lot of the logic and intelligence on how to manage that customer interaction. And the bottom layer is knowledge management. And so you need to work all three of these in order to deliver the right experience. But knowledge management essentially takes all of the information that you need about product information, a customer's profile, and puts it in a place that is accessible via the cloud and is well indexed so that it can be used in those omni-channel uh, experiences. The intelligence layer looks at all that information and takes the content of a query, whether that's a a social post or a text or a chat uh, session or something like that. And it interprets that as, you know, the intent of the customer and delivers the knowledge that is needed to the client through that application. And if you can get those three things right, you can deliver an experience that feels very much aligned to where the customer wants to be met, right? So there are different attitudes in social than you have when you're uh, SMSing versus when you're on the phone with somebody. But the key is to make sure that you can manage that customer interaction across all of those channels in a way that's consistent and sort of respects the, the, the interaction or the investment that the customer has made um, either yesterday or earlier or in, in the year and, and give them an experience that's personalized and, and sort of builds on your history with them as opposed to feeling like it comes from six different places. Excellent, excellent. Uh, and one of the, the things that's hard for all of us is that we're all facing a lot of uncertainties now, uh, right now, Colson, just with, uh, you know, the way we're trying to move through this pandemic and the changes that we're all having to make in, in terms of our structure and how we do our daily business. Uh, talk about the uh, AI models, uh, specifically agent-assisted AI models, and what you think companies need to be looking for here. Yeah, so, so a lot of, you know, that, that core of being able to um, service customers that have increasingly complex issues that they're trying to resolve in an environment where our businesses are changing, our clients' businesses are changing so rapidly, right? New product cycles and introductions, new policies and procedures. Um, you know, the, the pace of change is so great right now that it's almost impossible to train an employee on how to handle every situation that they're going to come across in a classroom training, right? What we would call just in case training. And so a lot of where we focused our energy is on how do you take knowledge and use that at every stage of the agent life cycle to make sure that you have the right information for the client or the, uh, the end user at the point of need. And to do that, you need to be able to have your insights and information to resolve problems or provide customer experience readily available. It needs to be indexed in a way that it can be delivered in context into a conversation so that you know, an agent is able to e easily find and, and, and deliver that content to a customer. And so we focused a lot on a couple of different things. One is that knowledge management layer. We mentioned that with Omnichannel just a moment ago. And the first way to deploy that is typically an agent assist model. And so, you know, as you deploy an interface to an agent that's handling a customer service interaction, 
and they're consistently utilizing this tool in order to access uh, the content. And that content could come from the web, it could come from uh, what we call tribal knowledge, so gathering all the intelligence of, of their peer groups and supervisors and things that typically were, were used on, on post-it notes or in notepads. Um, and bringing that all together in a way that's easily indexed and, and searched and delivered to the agent in a consumable format, it can have massive impact on the efficiency and the consistency of the delivery of a customer service experience. So for example, when we looked at, at one of our clients, we, we started by evaluating all the calls they were taking and we found that over 45% of the time a agent was on a, a call with a client, uh, it was dead air time. And, and that time was spent researching and looking things up. It was asking a neighbor uh, or a supervisor for some support. Um, or generally processing things that were very low value to the customer interaction and, and were really driving inefficiency in that interaction. And so when we deploy a knowledge management solution, the agent has access to that information in real time and is able to, to get you know, those responses delivered much more quickly. And we see average handle time reduced by about 15%. We see what we call first call resolution or the ability to resolve a customer's issue, uh, you know, the first time that they call in increased by seven to nine points. And these are really important metrics to the efficiency of how you deliver a customer experience through the call centers that we, that we operate. Um, the other important byproduct of having a platform like that is that it deploys AI and machine learning in a continual uh, improvement process, right? So as I start to get questions and I'm interrogating this knowledge management platform to get the answer, uh, if it's the correct answer, uh, I, I, uh, I know that and I, uh, you know, sort of signal back in the affirmative, but if it's not, I'm able to go back and have our knowledge engineers go back and understand why that was the case and, and tune the model so that it gets more effective. And as you do this hundreds of thousands of times, you get to identify things that are repeatable and that you know you have high confidence in being able to deliver the response against. And those are the best candidates to take and migrate into something that's fully automated, like a bot experience where a human is no longer required to, to deal with some of the, the types of questions that come up in, um, in our call center environments. Yeah, and, and on that note, and we, you know, with automation, which we talk about so much here on Tech Republic and ZDNet, uh, expand a little bit on what you think uh, companies need to be focused with in, in that arena. Yeah, like you know, automation is kind of a, it, it, <laughs> there's so many um, companies that have grown up, particularly larger companies where uh, processes that worked well at small scale or when you had a very streamlined uh, decision-making flow or a limited number of systems that needed to be touched uh, worked just fine. But as you go through growth in your business and you add new departments that are part of a chain or new systems that need to be updated and kept in sync with others, um, we found that process automation is an awesome way to sort of thread together all of the disparities in a large ecosystem that needs to be sort of uh, managed in order to deliver an outcome. So, you know, if, whether it's, you know, something like a back office process automation where you've got an intake of a document that needs to be updated across four or five different systems and done consistent, consistently with high degrees of accuracy, or if it's a, a process that um, is creating a lot of fallout or negative uh, net promoter scores that you can address with systematic uh, delivery um, you know, the, the, the process of understanding the end-to-end -end flow of information as it moves through a company, identifying where there are significant areas of fallout or inconsistency or even very high, um, you know, resource allocation like labor allocation um, helps us to identify where there are opportunities to, again, deliver efficiency, consistency, and um, uh, you know, ultimately a better customer experience by, by solving on speed and uh, inaccuracy. Very good, all right. Well, Colson, uh, we certainly appreciate you being here with us today, uh, your expertise uh, in, in digital transformation, the things that companies need to be thinking on, about and focusing on, of course, uh, for all of you out there, we've got a great deal of information and uh, research and articles and videos uh, on, on Tech Republic and ZDNet, and we hope that you will check that out there. Thanks so much for watching.